Mark. Welcome. Once again, my name is uh, Joey Ricardo from Deep Scope Studio, Professional Mixing and Mastering. And this is yet another one of our um, mini lessons that we do uh, for the website. And you can email me if you have any mixing, mastering, or recording questions, audio engineering questions at deepscope at deepscoperecords.com. And today we're going to talk about um, why I mixed into stems. You can see here this is a, a mix uh, that we have for one of my songs. And we have all of our instruments and effects buses, more effects buses, another effects bus. And then we get into here and we get into this whole line. Let me make this bigger. There we go. We get into the, this right, whole line starting right here of stereo aux tracks. And those are my um, stems. Everything filters down into these stems right here. I'm going to highlight those. And then those feed into my mastering chain. We can get rid of these. We don't need these. Those filter down into my mastering chain, these two aux tracks, and which go into the master fader. So why do I have all of these stems? And what this is, is I've got all the drums from over here, kick, snare, tom, tom, hi-hats, stereo, and the drum effects all coming down into this drum stem. I've got the bass coming down into this bass stem. I've got to get all the guitars, acoustic and electric, and the solo tracks, and all the, um, I call them guitar, the color tracks, um, coming into here. And I've got, just like the drums, not one, but two aux um, stereo aux for the drums, for the for the vocals. Now, why do I do that? Well, that um, is is fourfold. Let me turn this down so I can get ready to play this. There's there's few reasons for that. One is so that for mix purposes, as I'm mixing, I can check the mix, and that becomes a very important tool and um, evaluating and if, if you're on the right track, if your mix is working, and we're going to talk about that. Um, and then, if you mix into these tracks, I can send each one of these out into its own stereo audio track and record these into the audio track, and I'll have an audio track that's only vocals, one that's only guitars, one that's only bass. And I'll get into the uses for that, um, why you would want to do that in a second. So, for mix purposes, let's go ahead and start playing this mix. Down the block, the good Turn this down so we can talk. For mix purposes, um, I can check the mix. I can get rid of the vocal. And now all we have is the... Um, just the instruments. So I don't have to go through I don't have to go through and mute each and every instrument. I've got them all coming into here. So if I want to take out the vocals, bam, no more vocals. If I want to take out the bass, bam, no more bass. I can take out bass and vocals. So you can have I can do I can do just drums. And so Right then and there, you have this really simple and easy way to take out sections of the mix without having to go through and mute several different tracks, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15 different tracks all at one time. So you can just mute one right there. And what you can do is, if you've got a mix, you can take out the drums and the vocals. And you can hear how the bass and the guitars are interacting with each other. And if that's working between those two instruments, then you know that you're on track with, um, with the rest of the mix. So if that's working between those instruments, then, then chances are you bring the other instruments in if something's not working, it's those instruments you just brought in. 
And also, you can set this up to check your vocal, which is crucial. How is that working with the guitar? Because the guitar is going to have frequencies in it that are, are similar and sometimes in competition with the vocal. So if you set up kind of like almost like an acoustic setting with no drums, no bass, just a guy and his guitars, um, a lot of guitars, or a girl and her guitars, um, then, then, and those are working, then you know that you're, you're, your mix between those is working and you're on the right track. So you can bring in the drums and bass and you can come up with all these different scenarios to see if they're all working together. So that's very important in, uh, in evaluating your mix and seeing if everything is working out for you. The other advantage to this is, is for example, I can take this guitar track. I can create not a stereo aux, but a stereo audio. I can, instead of sending it into my, um, my mastering bus, I can send this out through, I'll just pick one. I can just, I can just send this out through a bus. 